open to James 1. James 1. We're looking at verses 22 through 25. This message today will ever either change your life dramatically or drop you in a deep hole in your life. I'm telling you, this lesson will either help you climb out of a hole or let you drop deeper in the one you're in. I want you to really pay attention today. In uh, James opens up in our text today, he opens up with the word for. It's a word day, D-E, and it's used as a continuous conjunction, a continuation of a conjunction of a continu continuation of an idea that was presented in verses 1, uh, 19 through 21. Now, this is really important because he begins our text today, and I'm just going to read the opening of it. He says, but prove, prove yourselves, um, prove yourselves hearers, prove yourself to be doers and not just hearers only. Well, let me just read the text to you in verses 22. Uh, but is the word day, and that's a, continuous, a continuation conjunction of what was previously taught in 19 through 21. Prove yourself doers of the word and not merely or only hearers who delude or deceive themselves. For if, And then he, he deals with the issue for, and this is what we've got to settle in our own life, if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he immediately forgot what kind of person he was. But one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, that word of God, and abides by it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man shall be blessed in what he does. When he says the word, but prove yourself, the word prove is not really a, a, an accurate word for what was used in the, in the uh, Greek, ginomai is the word that's used. But the word but means based on what we have just learned, which was how to have righteous communications. Remember last time? Righteous communications. He said, here's the formula. Be swift to hear, be slow to speak, and be slow to anger. Because when you're not, then it leads into all kinds of craziness. And we all know that. It leads into all kind of craziness. And so his message is about the fundamental ways of having righteous communication. Now he gets into the problem. And he, remember he said, an unrighteous communication is filthiness. What, what, it, what results in it is filthiness, excessiveness, and quality of evil. In other words, we talked about the cluster of sins that is manifest and becomes all kinds of things. It becomes hardened, bitter, yada, yada. Now, today he comes down and he's going to try to resolve some of the issues. So today he says, in, in, in our text, he says, but become, prove yourself, is the way my text says, prove yourself, doers of the word, and not only hearers who delude themselves, for if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man. And then he goes on, and then he tells you why you should be not only a good hearer, but a good doer, which means complete the faith cycle, which we'll see, because there's a blessing attached to that. Because what when you get to hearing, believing, applying, completing, when you, get, when you do the loop of the walk by faith and not by sight, you cannot break down the faith cycle at any point by sight. That's doing it your way, not my will, but his will be done. If you break that cycle down, then that's the mess you get. And so we're going to talk about that today. It's a very important, and I'll tell you, 2 Peter, 3rd chapter, verse 16 tells you, you've got to put your thinking cap on. 
and today you're going to really need it if you want to see change in your life. <laughs> I'm talking about real, true change in your Christian life. Because many of you are great hearers of the Word of God. You come to church faithfully. You take in the Word of God. You believe it. You, 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 you understand it. You believe it. But let me tell you, if you don't take it the second half of the way, if you don't apply it, if you don't walk by faith and not by, you know, you walk by faith, not sight, you don't take it into completion, he's talking to you. And I'll tell you how you can identify it. Bad habits are still with you. When push comes to shove, you fall off a cliff. You stop the faith cycle. You stop at dead in its tracks and begin walking in your old ways and by sight. By, by, by what you think will get you out of the, the mess. You break the faith cycle, and then your life is a mess. And I can't tell you how many Christians I meet in the Word of God that keep breaking the faith cycle, and they have patterns of bad behavior, unbecoming to the Christian life. And their communicational level is not righteous, it's unrighteous. And that's a clue to you that you got a messed up life. Now, the question is, how are you going to fix it? I'll tell you one thing you got to do. You can talk all the stuff you want to talk. You can talk about, you, you got the language. You got the language. Because you went to class, you listened, you understood and believed it. But I'll tell you where most of us are, are failing. We break the faith cycle when it comes to application. We go back to our old habits. We get into unrighteous communication. And, and then we just sink. And uh, I'm, I'm going to deal with the basic cause of it. How are you going to fix it? You're going to have to go back and fix it. And what we're going to talk about today is how to fix it. Let us pray. I give you this moment of silence as a believer priest, indwelt by the Holy Spirit to confess sin if necessary. Mental attitude, sin, sins of the tongue, and avert sins. Why? The Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. You can't study it, nor can you live it. You can't learn it, nor live it in carnality. Carnality, evidence of carnality is personal sin unconfessed. You need to confess it, and I'll tell you today how to break the, the bad habits of that sin coming back and back and back and back. And even if you don't know the sin, people who live with you know it because they have to live with it. And that needs to be broken and dealt with through this lesson. For Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here we are. I took the opening sentence. I broke it into three parts that you can understand it. I did a homiletical on it. Doers, danger, and delude. Now watch this. Watch this. But prove. I did. I dealt with that one simple little word. It's a conjunction day. It's a continuous, a continuation of the subject that's already there. Now we're going to fix that. And he says we're going to fix it. Notice the word prove is not the word. It's not the literal word prove like dokimazo. Normally, if we find that word in the English and it says prove, it's dokimazo. You can clearly see that's not dokimazo. That's genomai. And getomai means to become. It means to become. Now, this is in the present tense. And so it, it's a change of condition. This is not the aorist tense, as we talked about the other day. This is the present tense. And therefore, this is become, become. And he's talking about a change of condition. He's using the word become. This is the word become. It's in the present tense, which is talking about a process. How do I become this? You've got to become more than a hearer of the word. You become a doer of the word. And I'm going to show you today that the basic cause behind not being a doer of the word is you break the faith cycle. Because of old habits and, and selfish desires, and, and, and the writer James calls it entering into a disillusional life. Delusion. Even psychiatrists understand delusion. This is the word he's going to use that the word is deceive, is the word for delusion. 
but prove or become a change of condition. You are good here, but you're not a good doer of the word. You're a good hearer of the word, but not a good doer. Do you understand that principle? Well, read it till you understand it, people. He's not complaining that they're not good hearers. They're not good doers of the word of God. They broke the faith cycle. And that they're going to continue to break that faith cycle because they got old habits they're not willing to correct. And so they have this problem. And the way to fix it, the way to fix it is keep, let the word of God work through your life under the ministry of the Holy Spirit, walking by faith. You've got to work this thing. The faith cycle is hear it, understand it, believe it, apply it, and complete it. Watch. Hearing the word of God. That's Romans 10, 17. Once, once we understand it, we go to believe it. That's, that's, I don't know. Can you see that? I can't see it. I don't have eyes in the back of my head. If I was a mother, I could see that. Applying. 2 Corinthians, right? 2 Corinthians 5, 7. Completing. Now, that's the, that's the way we're going with that, clockwise. Hearing, Romans 10, 17. Believing, applying, completing. James 2, 22 over here. You got all those numbers? Here's what got you to be careful of. Here's the hearing side. Here's the doing side. People were going to church, just like you, and good at Bible study. Hearing the word of God, understanding the word of God, you'll see this in a moment, and believing the word of God, but a breakdown because they were good hearers, understanding and believing it, but when it came to application, they didn't do it. Old habits, there's a good reason why the average man says old habits are what? Hard to break. Now listen, you've been long enough in the Word of God, you've been long enough in the Word of God to break any habits, but you haven't because you still got them. And when push comes to shove in your life, you go back to the old habits. And the old habits, listen, not, and listen, why you do that, listen to what he says, you're delusional. You're delusional. And you know what you've done? You've deceived yourself. You haven't deceived anybody else because they have to live with you. And when the rubber hits the pavement, they live with the real you. They don't live with Christ. They live with the real you. And you got this pattern going on in your life because you keep breaking the, the... Do you see where you're breaking it? When push comes to shove, you don't apply it and complete it. Because in this period here, this is where faith rest works. That's the faith rest technique right there. It's on this side. It's on the doer side. It's not on the hearer side. That's where faith comes from. This is where faith goes. It goes into your life. Listen, it goes into your life because God is almighty. His word is almighty over here, but here's where God is almighty. He can break every bond, every hold upon your life. But you can't do it. And when you get there, you go back to your old system of trying to resolve problems in your life, and all it does is create more. And you never see that the fact that it creates more, it creates more, that you're not delusional about the Christian life. Paul, the writer James says, you're delusional. Now, I'm going to show it to you. Notice the word become is a present middle imperative. That's a command. He doesn't want you to stop being hearers. He wants you to start being doers of the word. Take that word of God out there into that wilderness wandering in your life 
of bad decisions and bad behavior, bring it out into the wilderness, and let God do something powerful in your life. There is no change in your life when the rubber hits the pavement because you go back to your old system. You break the faith cycle. And you don't have that power. You don't have that power of the word working in your life. You don't see God step in and feed the 5,000 plus. You don't see it. And nobody else does it. They don't see the new man. They see the old man. This is an easy fix on the road of recovery. You go back to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, to that inner dialogue, shut your inner dialogue down, and go to the ministry of the Holy Spirit, go to prayer in the Lord Jesus Christ, and seek what the Bible says your solution is. You don't do that. You shut this thing down and you wonder why there's no change in your life and you're the most knowledgeable person in the Bible I've ever met. You Listen, at some point, everybody else is going to blame doctrine, study of Bible, the Bible. They're going to blame Bible doctrine and they're going to walk away from the solutions of their life because you're a slug. You're not the real deal. You're not the real deal. The real deal takes it out and leaves it with God and watches God do impossible things. Now, it doesn't mean that there are not times in your life when you do that. I'm talking about the times when you don't do it when you shut it down to go to your old habits, to go to your old ways. That's what I'm talking about. There's where you need God for change. That's what I'm talking about today. We as a church of the Lord Jesus Christ have get, got to get on the ball. We have got to get on the ball. This is a command. He's not suggesting this. This is a standing imperative. This is a standing command to change the conditions of your life where they can see Christ in you when you're at Bible study and can see Christ in you when you're at a crisis in your life and you still are on the Bible. You don't throw the Bible under the, under the car in order to have your will implemented. Become doers. That's a predicate nominative, by the way. Be doers. You know what that line It ends in a T-E-S. This is the word do uh, taken to uh, a max. You know what it means? It means a lifestyle. When you add that T-E-S, it's a lifestyle. This is a doer. This is his life. This is my lifestyle. I'm not only a good hearer of the word of God, I'm a good doer of the word of God. I want Christ, I want to learn about Christ, and listen to me, and then I want to live Christ. I want to learn about Christ, and then I want to live about Christ. I want to live about Christ in the most traumatic, dramatic places of my life. Where everybody's watching me, how's he going to react this time? Boom, there it is, Christ. One thing, listen, you're good about learning about Christ. You're terrible about living for Christ. And you can sit in this church another hundred years and nothing change when it comes to the rubber hitting the pavement. I'm telling you, enough is enough. You've got to get on the stick. We've got to all be on this page. Not just one or two of us. We've all got to be on this page. This is the church that has impact. This is a healthy church. This is an impact church. 
the, listen, the church that doesn't have impact is only a, it's a halfer, not a whole. It's a half. Listen, you can't play a half a quarter. You can't play a half a game. You can't play a half a third quarter. You can't play a half a fourth quarter and go up against good stuff. The devil will whip you unmercifully. Can't live this way. Can't live this way. Here's the danger. I'm going to show you this word here because you're not going to recognize it because the word is a cool. The typical word is A-K-O-U-O. A cool. Watch this. A-K-R-O-A-T-E-S. That's the word. A-K-R-O-A-T-E-S. T-E-S says that's a lifestyle. See that word? Does that look like that other word? That's a vocabulary word. Does that look like that word? No, but it's similar. This word is rarely used, but it's used in James. It, this word is used in James to make a point. And I wrote it on your paper. This word is a special word that means to listen until you understand that it's not enough to be just a hearer and a believer of the word of God. That's learning about Christ. It's living Christ on the doer's side when the rubber hits the pavement. When your life gets full of stress and you get all bent out of shape. Boom. There's where the word of God works wonderfully and brings change into your life. Don't go back to the old ways. The old ways. It's easier to go the old ways, but it's tougher getting out of it. You create such a mess in it that it takes you so much longer to get out of it. It took you five minutes to get in it. It takes you a week to get out of it. Or a year, or a month, or several years. This is a neat word that he used. It means you stay being a good listener, but listen, the quicker, the quicker, that's not it. It's getting it over here to living the Word of God, not just learning it. Listen, I want you to stay. Every time the doors open, you get into Bible study. But you understand this. You are listening to learn it in order to live it. In order to live it. Or you've become only a hearer, only half, only half is good. You need the whole. Half is hearing, half is doing. Half is listening, half is, is learning, and the other half is living. You don't have a whole until you have them work in unity. That's why we talk about the faith cycle. The faith cycle. Do you know how you're supposed to receive the word? Listen to me. You know how you're supposed to receive the word? Huh? Well, in 19 through 21, it told you, in what? Humility. Humility. You know how you receive the word of God in class? In humility. You surrender. You don't sit there and fight with me everything I say. You don't sit and fight with the word of God everything that's spoken. You receive the word of God in humility. You study it. You study it. You understand it in humility. You believe it in humility. So that that exercise is so that when it comes to living, you will have, listen, you will apply as received, you will apply the word of God in humility. Listen. Without humility, there is no honor. Without humility, it's in receiving and it's in applying. Oh, I can't tell you, people. I cannot tell you. Listen, doctrinal churches are great on this side and they're miserable on this side. Believe me when I tell you, I've been in this thing since 68 I've been in this stuff a long time. 
And I'm telling you out of my own personal experience, learning is only half the game. You can be a great learner and a terrible liver. Terrible liver. I don't even like that idea. So there's a danger. He commands you, be commodore, not just a mere hearer, a mere hearer who's got that really good, but shuts it down when it comes to applying when the rubber hits the pavement. Here's the delusion. Look at verse 22. He gets to delusion. Who delude. Now your Bible says deceive. But this is paralogizomai. It's a present middle participle with a reflexive pronoun. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. You missed that. This word is delusion. This is self-deception. Listen to this. Who delude who? Themselves. They don't delude anybody out. Because when they have a fit over here, nobody that's in that atmosphere, they're not deceiving them any. No deception there. Who de look at, and that's the middle voice. That's the middle voice. That is the reflective middle voice along with the pronoun, which is a reflexive pronoun. It's showing you, do you not know that that's self-deception, being a hearer and not a doer? Every time it comes to the doing, when you're under stress and pressure, boom, you fade out. You become a jerk. You fall back into your old pattern. You're doing this to yourself. You're doing this to yourself. Oh, you won't want to. Listen, you don't want to. Listen, you'll blame everybody. You will blame. When, when you get down in here, when the rubber hits the pavement, you'll blame everybody. Well, if I'd have had a better, 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 I wouldn't be a worse, 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 worse. You can quit all that foolishness. Don't blame anybody but yourself. And stop blaming yourself. There's no, there's no positiveness in sitting here and stewing in your own stew. You created a bonfire, put water in it, got it to boil, didn't have anything to put in it, so you put yourself in it. That's what he's talking about. You put yourself in it. And go, oh, I can't stand it. I know. How crazy is that? This is what the writer's trying to tell you today. Wake up. You're a good listener. A, listen, a great learner and a poor deliverer. That's what you are. It's got to quit. Who delude themselves? That's delusional. Listen, Adam and Eve did it. You know how you can tell this person has not broke his old habits? Because he goes into secrecy, he goes into hiding, he goes into shame. But he doesn't go into recovery. There's no recovery. You would think that off of the, all of that hiding, secrecy, all of that blaming, all of that stuff going on, you would have thought that that would have been an awakening, a change. But no, why? They're powerless. They are powerless within themselves. I am telling you, the middle is reflexive. The reflexive pronoun is reflexive. You're doing this to yourself, and your ministry is stalled, and everybody around you is running like crazy from you. They're running like crazy. They're not running to you. If Christ was there, they'd run to you. But he's not there, and they're running from you. Are you listening? Huh? Are you listening? Good, because when you leave here today, I want you to be a what? Say it. I want you to be a doer. I want you to be a good listener. I want you to be a better doer. Because it is here where Christ, Christ comes out in the most powerful way 
And people see it because they, they know. Listen, as soon as that hits, everybody starts running. And then they stop and they look back because they saw Christ, not the old you. They saw Christ in you. They all come back. Hey, it's safe to go back. It's safe to go back. Do you think this faith stuff works? You got two of the most powerful things in your life, walking in the power of the Holy Spirit and walking by faith. They're both necessary to take you to the high ground. Are you uncomfortable? Notice that our lesson text opens with a warning to those who are hearers and not doers in verse 22 because they broke the cycle. Watch how he closes. Look at verse 25. Look how he closed. He opens with a warning, closed with a promise. Watch, look at this now. Look at verse 25. This man, the one who is a good hearer and a good doer, this man, this man who now has, listen, you know what he calls this? You know what he calls this exercise of, of hearing and doing? You know, what he, you know what he attributes it to? Watch verse 25. Look what he calls this. He calls this exercise the perfect law, the law of liberty. You learn the law here, but you get to exercise it. Here's the freedom of the law, that, the law, the perfect law of liberty. You've learned it, but here's where you experience it. The freedom once that you were in bondage to has now become free in Christ because of the exercise of the faith cycle bringing it into the experience of your life. Not in easy times. It's easy to apply the word of God when nothing's going on. Everything is good. Oh, how I love Jesus. I'm talking about when crunch time comes in your life. Become more than a hearer. Be a doer of the word of God. You have the power of the Holy Spirit. You have the power of the word of God for change. Let him do it. Stop going back to your old ways and shutting the cycle down. He closes with a promise to those who consistently complete the faith cycle in their life. This man will be absolute status quo I mean, of the future tense of be letting the cycle work. This man will be blessed. Listen, do you know what that's called in Matthew 5? You know what blessed is called in Matthew 5? The Beatitudes. The Beatitudes, that is, that is the shining banner that the airplane carries over the grace of God. This man will be blessed in time and eternity in what he does. And he puts this, this with a completion of the faith cycle or divine production. You want to see divine production? You're not going to get it in the hearing. You're going to get it in the doing. It is, it is the word in good soil that is willing to be produced. Not distracted by thorny grounds or hard ground or pathway ground. No, this is the one that produces a hundredfold, a sixtyfold, a thirty. That is the goal of the doer of the word of God is divine production. And that is rewarded in time and eternity. Blessed is the man, both in time and eternity. Blessed is the man, future tense. Blessed is the man. That's an absolute status quo verb of existence. Blessed is this guy who finally got it and has put it into his life. I didn't say it's easy. And I'm not teaching you anything that I, I haven't lived, that I'm not living now, that God hasn't taught me. The importance of James' warning is don't miss the promise. You know what he's after here? Do, don't miss the promise. Let the perfect word of God bring you into freedom in life. This man will be blessed in time and eternity for being a doer. A doer. A doer of the word of God. And what are you? Listen, up in, up in James 1, 17 through 21, 
You know what he said? Here's, here's, the, here's the positive enough. He already said this. He said, you know what this is? you got to get the Word of God into your soul. It's got to be planted in, in order to have a harvest. you got to plant seed to have produce. He called it the implanted Word of God that's got to be exercised out in your life. Listen to what he... And here's the promise he gave you in verse 21. He said, the implanted Word is able to deliver your soul. See, there's the promise. Here's the fulfillment of it. Able to deliver you. When that, when, when that rubber hits the pavement and you bring this whole thing to a screeching so, a halt, go back on your old ways, climb right out of that. Get out of that car right now. Get out of that car right now. Get out of that car. I don't care. It's in the highway. I don't care. Get out of that car. You're going to be a wreck anyhow. Get out of the car. That car ain't taking you anywhere but a wreck. You know, I love that little program where this guy is, sells insurance or something, but he's always, he's like a nightmare to people. Oh, you didn't want And he had, you know, the other day he swallowed a wedding ring. I saw him. You know, he's always, <laughs> he's always in a mess. He said, you know, anybody got another gift for the couple? I'm ring bearer and I'm hungry. He says back there, and he's the ring. Guys, that, that's the way you live. Got a wedding. Got a ring bearer. Got a ring. And then all of a sudden, the whole thing is disrupted. Chaos. Chaos. So he closes with this wonderful promise. And listen, he makes a point. His warning now has a point. Don't miss the promise of divine blessing in time and eternity by consistent, by not being consistent in the exercise of the faith cycle. Because let me tell you, this is where failure, this is where failure starts. You shut it down. Eve shut it down. She didn't have to. The devil came in there and gave her all kinds of gobbledygook. She could have shut it down. She was in a conversation, but she added and took away from the Word of God. What, what good's going to come out of that? She added and took away from the Word of God. In fact, she wouldn't come out. Listen, what you hear and believe has got to be applied as it was heard and believed. You can't add and subtract. You can't put your two cents in worth and get it done. You can't bring old, old, old patterns in there. You can't do that kind of thinking. You can't, you can't usurp your will over the will of God and think this thing's going to come out. You can't usurp your will over the will of God. Who do you think you are? I can't do it. You can't do it. Nobody could do it. Jesus Christ himself couldn't do it. Jesus Christ himself could not do it. Who do you think you are? Who do I think I am that I could do that? I'll tell you who it is. It's delusional. When we come back after halftime, maybe, <laughs> we're going to get into the fundamentals of it. We're going to talk about how to fix it. Enough is enough, church. Enough is enough. Get into your life and fix these things. Stop running people off. Start running them in. Let us pray. Men will take the offering. Father, we thank you today for your love and mercy and grace. And we thank you, Father, for these that have come and are great listeners. It's not the listening part of this church that we have a problem with. It's the doing side. It's the doing side. We break the faith cycle. We go back into our old patterns. When the rubber hits the pavement. When that stress and that stuff comes on us, we, we don't go to the simplicity of the Christian life. The simplicity of it is walk in the power of the Spirit. That's over the flesh. Walk by faith, not by sight. There we beat, we beat both. We beat both of the great areas of conflict in our life. And now it's a matter of just walking out by faith. Walk it out. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord.
What's wrong with this, Father? Take this offering and use it, Father, for the kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name, amen. Here's what James says. Having come off verses 19, 20, 21 with the word but, which refers back to that as a review, but become, prove yourself, prove yourself. Become doers of the word and not mere or only hearers who delude themselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. For once he has looked at himself and gone away, he has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. But one who looks intently at the perfect law, the law of liberty, and abides by it, that is taking it from hearing to doing, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an effectual doer, this man shall be blessed in what he does. And I tell you, as I told you in the first hour in the introduction, it is important that you get this understood. There is a breakdown in the faith cycle. And it's important that you not get into that breakdown of faith cycle. You have, you have been equipped in the church age with the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit who has the power over the flesh, Galatians 5.16. Walk in the Spirit, you will not you know, fill, fulfill the desires of the flesh. You have that power. Here we got hearing, believing, applying, and completing. I'm going clockwise. You cannot afford to have a breakdown anywhere, but what James is concerned, here's the hearer side, here's the doer side. This is apply complete, this hear and believe. Now that hearing, Romans 10, 17, believing, uh, Hebrews 4, 2, applying, 2 Corinthians 5, 7, completing, James 2, 22. All right. Now, when this, when this faith cycle, listen, over here, it, it, you can be a great hearer and a great believer in what you heard and can be break down on the application believe, and a completing side. This is the doer side. That's the hearer side. This is, this is where you learn and this is where you live. This is, this is where the rubber hits the pavement. This is really important. The other night we were talking about... on. on uh, Wednesday night, I've been in a series on the life of Jacob. I was dealing with family and marriage, and I did use him as an example in it. And then I got, we just, Jacob's life just takes a life on its own. And it was very clear that he had a directive will of God in hearing, a directive will of God about his problem with Esau. He, after 20 years, God said that, told Esau, Elah was all bent out of shape going back to the land and having to face his brother Esau, who threatened to kill him when he left, and he figured his brother was as good as his threat. And so he got all worried up about it. God, because of his, all the worry and fussing and praying to God about it, God answered his prayer and met with him in a, in a private Bible study, which we talked about on Wednesday night, and laid out the directive will of God again very clearly to him. And he, it broke down right there. He heard it, he believed it, and there was a breakdown in the application. And the breakdown was fear. Now, there's a lot of, lot of reasons why it breaks down. It could be doubt, it could be fear. Uh, it, it could be delusion, like James talks about. It could be self-deception. But there was a breakdown. Something's going to cause it to break down to get into application. Fear overtook him. He came up with his own scheme. It, he began to have a scheme. God told him exactly, I'll be with you. I'll take you all the way. I'll take you back to the promised land. Don't sweat it. Well, he sweated. it. And he broke down the faith cycle. And at that point, he was in deep trouble. At that point, he was in deep trouble. Jacob was in deep trouble because he broke down the faith cycle by fear. And it was a false assumption. It was a false assumption because he broke stride with what the directive will of God was about his problem. He said, well, I'm afraid of my brother. He said, listen, your brother ought to be afraid of me. But I'll tell you, your brother's not afraid of you, but he's afraid of me. I can tell you that. So put me out front. 
What's going to lead to? Well, I'll put gifts out front. I'll put the girls out front. I'll put the children out front. And I'll tell you what you put out front. You put out front God. Because I'll tell you what he should be fearful of. If he's not, by the time I get through with him, he will understand the fear of God. But Jacob didn't go there. Jacob went to fear. He went to mental attitude sin. And when he did, he got into delusion. Oh, what's going to happen? Oh, uh, so he came up with his own plan. He figured out another scheme. He went under his own thing. Did he know the will of God? Yeah. Did he apply it? No, he didn't. He was a good hearer, but not a good doer, like many of us. And that cycle has got to be... Listen, you're talking about all kinds of problems over here in the background. Here's the real problem. The mechanics... You're not going to be able to deal with what's behind fear until you get it, until you get this whole thing completed, what fear is about. Because fear was about, I've got to handle it. God told him, no, I will handle it. And, well, he may not handle everything. <laughs> He's God Almighty. This stuff comes to your life, you get full of fear, you get full of doubt, you get full of this, you get full of that. Guess what you're full of? You're full of yourself. You're not full of God because God can handle anything. He is God Almighty. And so we found it, it's something like that that breaks down the faith cycle. That's basic. You can't, you can't let anything break down, the, listen, the walk by the Holy Spirit. You can't break down anything, walk by faith. These are the keys to the, the life. These are the keys to the Christian life. Walk by the power of the Holy Spirit. Walk by the power of the Word of God. This is basic. This is 101. And if you think you've, you have grown and advanced to 300 level of dealing with that, you're wrong. You can't do 101. How are you ever going to deal with anything else when you can't get 101? I'll tell you why you're not getting it. You've de you're delusional. You, you are full of yourself. That somehow you think that whatever you, your scheme is, is better than the one that God laid out in front of your life. Nothing could be farther from the truth. And so here's point one. James' warning against being only a hearer and not a doer of the word of God is laid out in James 23, 24. Here is his warning and here is your danger. Verse 23, 24. For if, that's a first class condition true, which means this. If it's true in the protasis, the if clause, then it's true in the then clause. If then, come on now, tell me you understand that. The if is the protasis. And the then is the apotheosis. Just, I got to let you know, you're paying me good money. I understand this. All right? If, if that's true, if it's a first class condition, whatever's in the, for if, it's true in the then. Now, so remember this. For if anyone is a hearer of the word of God and not a doer, if that's true, then this is true. Now pay attention. Do you understand first class condition? You can't say it in English. I'm trying to tell you it's, it's there in the Greek. It's clear as a bell in the Greek. All right. I mean, a first-year student, get this. At least a first-year student in our church can get it in the School of Biblical Theology. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, there's a breakdown in the faith cycle. There's a breakdown. This thing ought to be a piece of cake. There's a breakdown. It is in your life too. It, th this got to be fixed before you fix anything else. For if anyone is a hearer of the word of God and not a doer, then this is true. He is like, he, that's perfect tense by the way, is dealing with old habits. Old habits are what? Yeah, they're impossible in yourself. Not only, not, not a, they're impossible. As far as a divine solution, they're impossible as far as the divine... Listen, when God breaks it, He takes care of the new person. He don't leave the old person in reform. He don't try to reform the old person. He changes him into a new person. You are a new creature in Christ. Your life is to be conformed to the image of Christ where in your 
in your living flesh, people can see Christ. You know where they need to see him? Close friends need to see him when things are tough. If anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, if that's true, then this is true. He is like a man who looks, that word, kata noyo, that's a word that means to perceive or be reflective, to seize his face in a mirror. Would you understand that's reflexive? You look in a mirror, is that reflexive of what you're seeing? Okay. It's called reflexive. This word, kata noyo, is a perceptive reflection. The one is like a man with perceptive reflection as he looked at his natural. Now, this word is not the word that's used in 2 Corinthians 2.17 for the natural man. That's not sukikas. This word, notice this word is the word Genesis. And it means divine origin. It's a word connected with divine origin. Oh, Here's a believer who looks in the mirror and he sees he's been created in the image of God and the image of God is Jesus Christ. Come on now. A believer, when he looks in there, he doesn't just see a man who's been born in the image and likeness of God. He sees a person that's been born again into the image of Christ. And that person that you see born in the image and likeness of God reborn to be the image of Christ is what other people see when they see you. You need to see it because whatever you see in the mirror, they see. And I'm not talking about looking in the mirror and do some phony baloney and draw a mustache and long hair and go like, well, there's Jesus or something. I'm not talking about that. Is like is like a man, is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror. That's James 1.23. James 1.23. Hearers of the word who understands its truth regarding the need for specific personal change in the Christian way of life. That's what's important. You go to church, you listen to the word of God, you hear the word of God, you learn the word of God, and it tells you what kind of man you're supposed to become. It tells you, here's who you are and here's who you become. It, it puts the carrot in front of the horse. This is who you're to become. And as the word of God begins to mold you into the image according to the likeness of Christ, you begin to look in a mirror and you begin to see a change in your life. You look in, you in perspectively look into your life. first thing I do in the morning is I shave. That's how I start my morning. Brush my teeth first. I can't stand. I look in the mirror. I shave and look in the mirror. And I tell myself who I, who I desire to be in Christ every morning. I don't tell them who I was. I tell them who I want to be. I want to be that priest. I want to be that I want to be that heir. I want to be the inheritance. I go through my 20 things of status privileges. That's the person I want to be. I can't in the flesh, Father. I can't in the power of the Holy Spirit. I can't by walking this out by my life by faith. This is a person I desire to be. Make me that person today. I don't want to be any, per, any other person. I want to be one of these people or a combination of them today. I want, I want to be the ambassador for Christ, not the ambassador for Ron Adema, nor doctrinal studies. I want to be an ambassador for Jesus Christ. The word implanted in verse 21, the word implanted without producing divine good. What is the deal? You come to church, you take in the word of God, you know you're growing, you're, you're growing in the knowledge of the word of God. It's non-productive in your life especially as you mature, when you begin to mature, you begin to take off easy stuff. And then there's times when you get under stress and get under pressure and the thing builds up and then all of a sudden, boom, you're right back to where you was. I'm the same guy that was three years ago. 
Not in every respect, right? Because you can look in the mirror and say, well, I've had some changes in my life. Agreed? I have def definitely progressed. And, he, and listen what he's going to tell you in the mirror when he looks at you in the mirror. He's going to say, you're doing really good. You're doing really good because you're on the, you're on the move to become something you're not. You're to something you want to be, and that's that image of Christ. And then all of a sudden, boom, but he says, we got some issues. You broke down the face cycle right here. You panicked. You broke down the face cycle. Don't, don't beat up yourself. Don't hide. Don't, don't go into secrecy. Don't withdraw. Don't hide behind the tree. Don't get no fig leaves on. Come back, come back to Christ. Come back to where you broke it down. Fix it. And understand the next time I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to break the faith cycle. I'm going to walk this out in the power of the Holy Spirit and by the faith in the Word of God. I am going to not let that conquer me. I'm going to conquer it. Now we understand what Paul says, be overcomers. What John says, be overcomers. We are over. Listen, I'm not talking about overcoming what anybody could overcome. I'm talking about overcome what you could never overcome apart from the power of God in your life. Was the issue you broke down cycle? You broke down one on one on your life. It's like when you're carnal. What happened? You broke down one on one. You walked in the spirit. You walked in the flesh and not the spirit. Now you got to confess your sin. What? To get back to where you left. Just to get back to where you left. Agreed. That's all it does. First time what I does. What I say it all, but that's that's powerful. And then when you get back there, you got to fix this. You can't go that way anymore. You broke the faith cycle. You've got to come back. You've got to walk it out by faith. That inner dialogue, you know in the inner dialogue you were headed to trouble. You knew. Come on. I ain't the only guy that has inner dialogue. Come on. <clears throat> if you don't have inner dialogue, you're dead. If you're not dead, then you, you're, not, you're, not, you're disconnected with reality. Jeez. Point two, the danger is to be content with hearing the word of God without real change occurring by cycle it to the doer side. It's when the rubber, for this church, it's when the rubber hits the pavement on really issues, when you panic. Like, just like Jacob did the other night. Jacob. I'm talking about Jacob in the Bible. In case somebody else is named Jacob. You see, the great loss, you're, what the great loss is when you break cycle, the great loss is what's promised in verse 25. The great loss is what God promised you in verse 25 if you carry the faith cycle out to fulfillment. You know what it is? Oh, if you learn nothing else, learn what the promise is. My goodness, learn the promise. This man is blessed. In all of his ways. This man is blessed. Not cursed. Blessed. Do you understand that? But you got to go through the face cycle. You got to get, you got to get it into completion. You got to get it into completion. What is the great personal danger that, that James writes about in verse 22? Listen, delusion. Self-delusioned. Self-deceived. What kind of games are you playing with yourself, with the Lord? Who deluded themselves. He put the middle reflexive along with the reflexive pronoun to overwhelm you with this understanding of this breakdown. This is not complicated. This is 101. This is baby stuff. And the reason it's complicated in your life is because you've, you are involved in delusional thinking. This is one-on-one -on -one stuff. The reflexive pronoun themselves, the reflexive pronoun expresses the action of the subject upon itself. And when you add it to the middle voice of delusion, you have a messed up believer who chooses to go regularly to church and study the Bible, who chooses to listen to understand, who chooses to believe the word of God is truth, and knows he needs to apply it for necessary change, but never takes it to the whole way, especially when the rubber hits the pavement. 
he collapses. Yet he knows all this stuff. He's making good choices. But he doesn't over here. And all he wants to do when he gets caught over here is to point his finger and blame, hide, do all the things that doesn't fix anything. Fixes nothing. This is a messed up, this is a messed up believer in doctrinal churches. This is the guy. And somewhere, you've got to get a hold of this in your life. You're delusional if you think there's another way to do this. You're delusional. You're delusional. James says this is delusion. This is self-deception. You know who had it? Matthew 16, 21 through 23, Peter. When Jesus lays out that whole program to Peter, Peter rebukes him. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You're a stumbling block to me. You would have me do what you do, break the cycle. Paralogizomai, the word deceive or delude, means to delude by false reasoning. This word in the Greek language means false reasoning. I call it false assumptions. I teach this all the time. False assumptions. Where do you, when do you ever know you're in false assumption? Inner dialogue. Inner dialogue. You're talking foolishness to yourself. You're not talking the word of God. You're not talking spirit. You're not talking Christ. You're not talking that. You're talking foolishness. False assumption. The present tense shows a habitual pattern of delusion in the Christian life that breaks down this cycle. Because of the break sound side of the doer side of faith. Second Peter, the third chapter 16, breaks it down. It said all scriptures is inspired by God, is profitable. Is God breathed and profitable for teaching, for rebuke, for correcting, for training in righteousness. That inhale, exhale is taking the whole thing around the side. That's faith. We call it the faith cycle. You come to church, you hear it, you believe it, you understand it, all that stuff. Then when it comes time to get it out into line under crunch time, crunch time comes, you, you fall apart. You break the cycle. You break the cycle. And not only does it damage you, it damages anybody around you. Adam and Eve, they began to be the same players. They broke down the faith cycle, they began the same players. They both hid, they both covered up, they all, they were goofy. As far as the word of God. Romans, the 12th chapter, verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world. You know what you know you are? Is when you think you can run it a different way than what God's told you to do it. He tells you, don't go to the flesh, go to the spirit. Don't go to sight, go to faith. Quit falling apart. Is God able? Do you believe in Romans 4.21, people? Do you, do you really believe it? God is able to do what he's promised. Is he able? Well, apparently to everybody but you. Apparently to everybody but me. But with me, there's always exceptions because you know I can't. You know me. Quit that. You, listen, I tell you what you're going to discover when you let the word of God work over here. Here's what you're going to discover. That the word of God categorically taught is the perfect law of liberty. It's the perfect law of liberty. That's what you're going to learn. It's, that's what James said. Here's the secret. Here's what you're going to learn. And when you learn this, it's going to put your life on a new path. And you're going to be the person that is blessed. That ought to be your goal. That's the promise. This man, this believer will be blessed. Not only in time, but eternity. 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter, write it down. 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter, verses 10 through 15, tells you how it's going. That stuff that becomes divine production in time will bless you now and will bless you in eternity. Agreed? At the judgment seat of Christ, it'll come back and salute you. 1 Corinthians 3rd chapter, 10 through 15. I mean, when he put that in the future tense, it's for time, 
blessings in time and eternity. Listen, when you divine produce, you get the benefit now, and you get the benefit, you get the bonus. Job well done, thy good and faithful servant. hoo -ah! Listen to what he says. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Watch this now. Watch this. This is what missing. This is what missing. You got to bring it all the way around for this to work for you. You're not there yet. Oh, if you think you're in, you're wrong. You're wrong. All you've done is work this side. All you've done is work this side. You've got to have the second half of that to work this side of the faith rest. Listen to what he said. Listen to what he says. Oh, listen to what he says. That you may prove. Now, that's our word dokimazo. Do, dokimazo. That you may prove. Right here it is. Right here is where it is. That you may prove what the will of God is. That's the directive will of God. Whatever the issue is, that the will of God is, that is good, acceptable, and perfect. Why wouldn't you stay with God? Why would you forsake the power of God? Why would you give up anything that God tells you he will bless? Why would you give it up for any screwy idea you have over here? And it's not enough just over here. Be conformed. Be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, that's good over here. What about over here? How about over here? Where you prove that the will of God is good, perfect, and acceptable. How about that? Let me tell you, that's what God's interested in. If you're, if you're all this and you're delusional about this, you're the guy, you're the guy out of teeny uh, teeter totter. I don't know what you call it. Is that everybody know what I mean by that? You got two people on this thing who's up now. Your buddy only gets off one time without you knowing ahead of time, right? You ever had the guy who got you up high and then stepped off? His end? See, that thing that works has got to go both ways, doesn't it? It can go at different speeds. Yeah, you want to go fast? We'll go fast. Can't get off, though. <laughs> a doer. A hearer and a doer. Completing the faith cycle. This is where God shines. This is where God shines. Here's my final point. Content to go regularly to the church as a good, a good hearer of the word is a choice. It's a good one. Hearing the word of God in order to understand it is a choice and it's a good one. Cycling it to belief as truth necessary for change in his life is a choice and it's a good one. Applying it to completion as a matter of life change is a choice, and it's a good one. Unfortunately, not being a doer on the side of the word of God is also a choice, and it's a bad one. It is not a good choice. It's a bad one. And stop blaming everybody for your hang-ups. Stop pointing your finger and blaming everybody else. Time to go and look at a mirror and be honest with who you're looking at about who you are, who you was, and who you should become. Unfortunately, not being a doer of the word is also a choice. The word implanted that is not permitted volitionally to produce divine good is not able to deliver your soul. It's not able to deliver your soul. That's what he said in verse 21. It's there, but it's not able. You know why? You shut it down. You shut it down. Went off into goofy thinking. Didn't stay with the word of God. Didn't take it. Didn't take it around to prove the will of God that is good, acceptable, and perfect. You didn't push it all the way out. You got the will, but you didn't see the will work. You didn't see the good, perfect, acceptable way that God's will works in your life. You missed, you missed the greatest part to your life. 
the application, willful application of the Word of God where God could do the impossible in your life. Just absolutely the impossible. Because He is more than willing. Romans 4.21 for once he has looked at himself, verse 24, for once he has looked at himself and gone away, perfect tense. You know what that perfect tense, gone away, means? He's looked at himself in the face and knows there should be changes, knows the Word of God is demanding changes, and refuses to do it. He goes away, knows who he was, knows who he is, and he walks away without any change. That's the perfect tense. He has immediately forgotten Eris middle, indicative, middle voice of reflection. He has immediately forgotten what kind of person he was. How are you ever going to pay attention to the person you should be when you can't forget the person you was? Wow. Notice not what kind of person he should become by cycling the word implanted by faith in order to deliver his soul. No, no. And how should he be receiving this word and how should he be applying the word? In humility. Listen, there will be no honor without, there will be no honor without humility first. There will be none. Listen, Isaiah 55, 9, you're familiar with these words, but apply them. For as heaven, for as the heavens are higher than the earth. Well, if I could get you to believe that, it would be something. So are my ways on earth higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than yours. The guy who shuts his face cycle down. For his own thoughts and his own, own will? He don't believe that verse. Oh, he's heard it. He don't believe it. Why? Because he don't take it all the way to completion. So everything is half a verse. An idea. A delusion takes over. As high as the heavens, for as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. This is what he's saying in Hebrews 4.12. The word of God is alive, powerful, that is two-edged sword, piercing to the dividing of the soul and the spirit, the joints and the marrows. Listen, if there was nothing more than that, that would be awesome. But he's become a judge and a critic of the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. My goodness, people. There's your inner dialogue. Not, I'm going to get even. No, I'm going to set them straight and all that business. What's wrong with you? What is going on in your life that can't be corrected by the power of the Word of God? I close with this. Whatever causes a believer to choose not to become a doer of the Word, whatever that is, and it's something, buddy, it's always something. Whatever causes a believer to choose not to become a doer of the Word, by the challenge of the word for change, has become self-deceiving illusion in his life. You believe the lie of the devil and you've placed it into your life as greater than the word of God. Only person to change that is you. I don't know if you want to change it. You haven't changed it in how many years? You'll never change it unless you want it. And if you want it, you've got you to you gotta go by the rules that God has set in your life. You got to walk in the power of the Spirit over the flesh. You got to walk in the power of faith over sight. And you got to do it when it's tough, not when it's easy. You got to do it when the rubber hits the pavement. You got to do it when it's real, in real time, and real pressure. You'll become an overcomer. It's got to occur in your life. You need to see the power of God overcoming things in your life that give you peace and liberty. You shall know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Oh, yeah, when it's, when it's cycled. It's not a just if that all you do is hear that. 
It becomes reality when you apply it. Then you find out liberty. Oh, I've heard about liberty, but I'm in bondage. How about you want out? Walk, walk, walk this thing out by faith in the power of the Holy Spirit, and you'll find, listen, you'll find that the word of God isn't just the word of God. It is the perfect law of liberty. It will set the captive free, including you. Father, we thank you today. I, I, I don't know what else to do, Father. I've preached my heart out. I know this is true. It changed my life. I'm in a change myself. I don't want any of that old stuff anymore. I want, I want the reality, the power of God. I don't want just to believe it. I want to see it. I want to see it in the reality of my personal life. I want it for my church. This church that I pastor, I want to see that. How, how, how are we going to do, how are we going to see the impossible things done by God when we can't see the possible things? We spend so much time fighting with the possibles, we can't even step out on the impossible things of God. We're a church that needs to be able to get beyond we need to win over the possibles to get to the impossibles to see God do the unbelievable things for our church. I'm afraid we've become a church that can't even see the possibles conquered, let alone the impossibles. We look at the giants. We look at the people of the land and, and see uh, them giants and us grasshoppers. What is that about? I won't be that. I don't want to be that. I don't want to be part of that. We live in a time where we have to conquer the giants by believing God is greater. Got to stop viewing ourselves in, in the most demeaning terms. Who would ever believe that we'd be grasshoppers and the unbeliever would be giants. Well, you talk about delusion. Help us, Father. Help us. As the kids say, help us, Jesus. Help us. Because it's in your name. We've been saved. We live. We minister. We're proud to be called. Christians. In Jesus' name, amen.